healthcare practitioners receive resuscitation training from U.S. experts. So it's very important for any medical provider, whether in OBGYN or in the ENE, um, anybody that has any contact with newborns should be trained in neonatal resuscitation. Details of this story and more in the National Report. With the National Report, I am Janelle Hamlet. Nurses and doctors at the General Hospital are participating in a one-week neonatal resuscitation train-the-trainers workshop at the pediatric ward. The workshop is being facilitated by a team of neonatologists from the United States. Head of the visiting delegation, neonatal resuscitation instructor Dr. Donald, says 90 health practitioners will be trained to boost the service in Grenada. She highlighted the importance of neonatal resuscitation. Myself, in collaboration with two neonatologists from the Children's Hospital of Montefiore in the Bronx, New York, we're running a neonatal resuscitation program and we're training about 90 medical profess professions um, from Grenada, Caracol, and Pitti Martinique, 10 of which will continue on as instructors for the neonatal resuscitation program. Neonatal resuscitation is extremely important for, our, for any baby within the first few minutes of life. It's very important to be able to assess the baby and to decide what skills you want to administer um, to increase or to decrease the risk of mortality and mortality. So it's very important for any medical provider, whether in OBGYN or in the ENE, um, anybody that has any contact with newborns should be trained in neonatal resuscitation. The workshop comes at a time when neonatal care is being placed under the microscope following the recent announcement of infant deaths at the hospital. Dr. Donald stressed the need for teamwork during health care. For the trainers, we, we kind of want to make sure that um, everybody's on the same level to, do with, um, to deal with skills in assessing the baby, in providing services to the baby as needed. Um, also, the course concentrates a lot on teamwork and be, being able to communicate. Um, as instructors, they have to be able to look at their other medical providers and see what areas need more concentration, what skills need to be properly um, what skills we need a little bit more time with training um, and sort of encourage that sort of teamwork mentality, open communication. Because when you're doing neonatal resuscitation, everybody has to be aware of what everybody's doing. The participants were trained in the use of resuscitation devices for positive pressure ventilation, chest compressions, tracheal intubation, and administering medication. Government officials are singing the praises of the St. Augustine's Medical Services for the initiatives and steps it has been taking to advance the healthcare landscape in Grenada. Government ministers and health officials who attended the launch of SAM's new 64 slice CT scanner and hyperbaric chamber Wednesday last say the institution is a perfect example of how public private collaborations work to benefit the people. Here are some excerpts from remarks delivered by key figures. Today. We are opening a facility that a lot of us need. I look forward to our people, not only the people of this constituency, receiving the benefits. The addition of a state-of-the-art 64, 64 as compared to 16 slice CT scan and a life-saving hyperbaric chamber to the services offered by this institution will go a very long way towards saving lives and preventing unwarranted complications. It will also send a signal to Grenadians abroad and to visitors that Grenada takes healthcare seriously. I see the introduction of these services, as Dr. Michi mentioned, as an enhancement and an augmentation to the services we offer here in Grenada already. Um, it's a very useful partnership between the public and the private sector. These kind of partnerships is really what is going to make healthcare. Um, according to Dr. Dragon, move to a different level. Ministry of Health alone definitely cannot do it. It adds to our product, it adds to uh, comfort of our people, it adds to uh, the fact that our citizenry would benefit from that kind of relationship and investment in healthcare. This is the National Report. More news after the break. The Aedes aegypti mosquito spreads the dengue, chikungunya and zika viruses. It only needs a small amount of water to breed. Check for stagnant water regularly. 
Buckets including the rim should be drained and kept dried. Avoid using flower pot plates, but if you do, ensure they are emptied every two days. Get rid of water that settles in potted plants. Dish rack trays should be emptied daily. If your pipe leaks, throw away the collected water and rectify the leakage promptly. Mosquitoes also breed around the roots of plants. Change the water, rinse the roots and scrub the vase to remove mosquito eggs daily. Remember, by destroying mosquito breeding sites, we can prevent dengue, chikungunya and Zika. A message from the Ministry of Health and Huggins. The excitement is building as Team Pure Grenada seeks to capture its 13 gold guilds at the prestigious Chelsea Flower Show May 23rd to 27th. This year, the Grenada Tourism Authority, GTA, has made a significant investment ensuring that Pure Grenada, the spice of the Caribbean, secures maximum visibility during the event. Apart from the main support, the GTA is sponsoring a Chelsea Flower Show media event, which was not done last year. 18 top UK journalists have been invited not only to cover the Grenada exhibit, but also raise awareness of holidays to Pure Grenada the Spice of the Caribbean, highlighting local authentic experiences. This event is carded to take place on May 23rd at the Pure Grenada Pavilion on the Chelsea Hospital grounds in London. On Monday 22nd May, exhibits will be judged and visited by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The first Grenada-inspired exhibit appeared at the show in 1998 and the team received a silver gilt. Since then, the team has won 13 gold medals and 5 silver gilts from 1998 to 2016. Grenada held its inaugural leg of the Global Film Festival over the weekend. The festival's objective was to bring films to the people that would otherwise not be shown or those they did not have access to. It displayed local film production, music videos, local TV advertising, and local documentaries. During the launch of the film festival on Friday last, Dominican-born general manager of IKTV in St. Vincent and featured speaker Irvin Durant stressed the importance of training and exposing young people to the creative arts industry. He is optimistic that this will foster and develop talents in the film production sector. Technology is an advantage to us, our generation today, and we have that opportunity to be able to bring things to the fore. Uh, for future trends. The demographics that we are seeking to address, some of them are here, and it, we should not exclude the people that have already been dropped out of the school system at age 13 and 14 because they are slanted not to an academic program but to an artistic program. We need to embrace those. But we also need to go back into the, kin in the elementary school levels and begin to incorporate a heavier, meatier menu of an all-inclusive program for students. Culture Minister Senator Brenda Hood is already looking forward to next year's festival and the many benefits it holds for Grenada. It is my hope that the Global Film Festival will grow from strength to strength and opportunities will be created so that Grenadians can develop skills to work in this very lucrative industry. This is the first ever film festival to be held in Grenada. As we develop these festivals over the upcoming years, we will be able to showcase the rich cultural heritage and talents that are unique to us. Our people will be given opportunities in various levels of the film industry. And that's the National Report. I am Janelle Hamlet.